what I want to know is how do you, how does a real singer feel about uh, this new age of auto tune? I think auto tune could be a very useful plugin. It can be a useful tool. Mm. You know, it's nothing. It's 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 not very different. I'm not to say it's nothing, not that very, but it's not very different than using, you know, than, than EQing, you know, and blending and using, you know, any other plugin to enhance the sound. Right. You know, auto tune. I think people have a misinterpretation of what auto tune is, and I and and I and respectfully because. I know that there are a lot of people who lean on it so heavily that it actually becomes their identity, their right. their their artistic identity, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but auto tune, to my understanding, was originally intended to be used for automatically tuning you to the right pitch, pitch. Mm -hmm. of the key that you're singing in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think people started liking the wiggle, they like yeah. the, the like the fluttering sound, the little. The, the 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 little you know Electronic. digital artifact yeah. that comes with it it became a, a you know and I think a lot of people may have whether intentionally or directly or indirectly might have gotten the same exp or similar experience of what you would get when a person is using a vocoder or a vocalizer mm -hmm. it just you know or even you know singing into a, a, a fan, you know, it just yeah. creates that thing, you know, it's like, That's what it sound like. You, know, you know, it just kind of, it just, it's just that thing, mm -hmm. you know, you know, if you put like, you know, a doubler or a chorus kind of like plug in for those who know what I'm talking about, phaser, it reverb. just, you know, a phaser, it just does something to your voice mm -hmm. that sounds cool, mm -hmm. you know, and for a person who may not have good pitch, you know, a good ear, it makes you feel like you're doing it. Right. You know, so I think it's just, you know, it's like it's, it's, it's a performance enhancer. Yeah, asterisk. You know. You ever that, entertained the thought of using that at the time when it first came to fruition for what people were using it for? No, I just, because I was so hell bent on doing it correctly. And I, w I would rather do a thousand takes to get it right mm -hmm. than yeah. to just lean on it. But what, mm -hmm. what started to happen was I started to develop a complex. Mm. And, and, and even even engineers down to the not just the the artists or the producer that I would, even engineers was like, bro, it's perfect. And I'm like, no, it's <laughs> not right. You know, I just <laughs> so yeah. instead of wasting hours in the studio on one song, I would just focus on the performance, feeling wise. And mm -hmm. then I was, you know, whatever note corrections that I need to do, here and there, I would do that you know, in post and in mixing. Because specifically what it started to do, it started to make me feel like, you know, like I couldn't. But then I would do a show live and be like, oh no, yeah, I can. Mm -mm. Right. So I, I needed to stop entertaining activity that would cause me to start second guessing myself. Mm. So I started getting into a way where it's like, bro, I need to get this song done. So hmm. slap that auto tune on there because I need to, because I can't be distracted by the notes not being right and I'm not focusing on getting the song out. Hmm. And as a perfectionist, so let me just give a perspective. I know that I'm a singer, but I don't record or, or even perform or think like a singer. I'm probably closer to a painter, you know, or, or, or a chef. Like, I'm not thinking about it being done in one flail swoop. I'm like, let me do it, sit with it, think about it, come back, tinker with it, you know, change mm -hmm. this, change this here until I have the masterpiece right. mm -hmm. that I can actually perform in one go live. Mm -hmm. You know, that's mm -hmm. the difference between me and maybe some other people. Like, I make sure that whatever I do in the studio, I'm able to pull off in real time. Mm. So in a way, it, call, it almost kind of becomes like an elaborate rehearsal because I've done it so many times, you know, and I've, I've performed this lines and because I got so many songs, it's, it's almost impossible, almost impossible to remember everything. Mm -hmm. So I lean on muscle memory. I know that when I was recording this song in this part, I was trying to get right. I did it like this and I was trying to accomplish this. So let me kind of like lock in and reenact in that moment right now. 
where I don't, I don't have to think about it. I don't have to like really recall it. I know that what I'm doing, the next motion is this, the next note is this, the next arrangement is this, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and auto-tune, at least in how I use it, helped me because it, 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 helped, it, 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 it stopped me from obsessing over perfection so much. Right. Because the, the, the perfection part of it was important because I know that this is something that once it's out, it's out. I can't change it anymore. Mm -hmm. So I need for it to be as perfect as I can make it before it leaves the door. Mm -hmm. Before it leaves, because once it's out of my hands, it's out of my hands. That's why I say I liken it more to like a painting. I'm not about to, you know, take it off the wall and repaint it. Like mm -hmm. it is what it is. Mm -hmm. So I need to get everything out now. I need to do all the tweaking. I need to do all the tinkering now. I'm not sure I've ever heard auto tune on your records. because I don't you because I don't use that's what I say in the way that I use it. I use it as a as a as a as an enhancing tool. You know, it's like it's like it's like how, like I said, it's like how people use EQ. How you turn up the treble and you you turn down some of the bass in certain parts and you try to balance the sonics. You know, mm -hmm. you throw a little delay on there, you throw some reverb on it. I use it in that way. What's mm -hmm. the rap equivalent to that? I don't think you guys have that. The rap yeah. equivalent to a, that? A ghost writer. No. A ghost writer giving you, nah, a, giving you a, 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 a line or two at the end. Uh, uh, if, if there was a flow I writer. I don't think that that's the same. There was a flow writer, yeah. I'm asking. Not a ghost writer. Mm. I don't think in that arena there's room for that. Mm. Yeah. No, I don't see that. I think I think I think there's a parallel to it. We just may not be putting our finger on it. I, I think don't think I don't. To, to, okay, nah. the reason why I don't think so is because in 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 hip hop or specifically rapping, it 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 you it's you. Unless it's not. But then it that's not a parallel to what I'm talking about. That's just simply that's not you. Right. Mm -hmm. When you talk because, about because, a ghostwriter, no, right. that's not you. Yeah, that's just not but, you, right? Because, okay, here's why. Because even though I use auto-tune, it's still me. It's mm -hmm. just me through auto-tune. Still got to know how to use it. Yeah, it's still it's me through auto-tune. Okay, now the, the parallel for that would be if you were struggling with one bar no, and I gave you no. the line at the no, end of the because bar. You, like you're still, no, because you still... Not even the whole line, just the no, word. No, because here, again, you're you're associating two different things. You're talking about the what. I'm talking about the how. Mm. I'm still talking about the how. You know, you're talking about Because eventually the, the argument can be made that eventually I would I would have came up with that word. But you're still talking, it's still about the what. But something helped me come up, someone helped me come up cool. with that word. Cool, cool. It's still the what. Nah, it, it, it's, that's not a fair analogy. A fair analogy you, you, would, would be someone saying, say that line like this. Now, that's, we're, that's, that's, now we're talking about the how. I think I think because the criteria for rappers and singers are different. Yeah, it is. I think that this is because because it's because it's because it's it's so socially accepted and culturally and traditionally accepted that it's a group thing. What are in my arena, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Over there, the less, the more. Yeah. Meaning, the less people that was involved with it, the, the more, more credit I believe you. Mm -hmm. I get as an MC. Or you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Right. I, I still see it. It's very different. That's why M kicked all, all the Kendrick Lamar's people out of the studio. Whoa, wait, what? M, nah, Eminem, when he first met uh, Kendrick, oh, he was with a, a bunch of people. Him. Oh, do a track, and he told told all his people, "Yo, tell your peoples to get out." Oh, where right. I know that. I just want you he, here. He nah, didn't believe that. He didn't believe that Kendrick yeah. was writing all that stuff. Oh, on his own. got you, right. got you. So once he got him in the room by himself, and the song came out, he, he was performed. like, "Jesus." I didn't this. know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I heard that. I saw that story. Gotcha. I didn't know about that. But yeah, and again, back to you know, I didn't have enough confidence to be a rapper. This Turn smack rapper, only smack rapper that you know is smack rappers. Got bars I can hang with the backpackers. Trap star, I don't hang with the backpackers. I'm in the hood with the work you heard, making fiends leave earth you heard. Got your baby mama thirst you heard. Feel the flow, nigga, throw it in reverse. This the way you need to serve you heard.